Let's look at an example pool. This one's a big one, 20 foot by 40 foot, and it has a deep end, so the average depth is six feet. 36,000 gallons, that's a lot of water. And if you follow these other videos that I make, you'll already know that the filtration goal that I recommend that you should follow is three times the volume of your pool filtered every day because that will achieve 95% of all of the water in your pool being filtered at least one time. But the setup for this video here is, this is kind of a manufactured setting where it's the worst case scenario for a variable speed pump and kind of a worst case scenario for a 20 by 40 pool because two things. One, this pool uses inch and a half plumbing. That's really small and it's really too small for a 20 by 40 pool. And a modern day 20 by 40 pool would have two inch or even larger than two inch pipes because really inch and a half plumbing is pretty limiting. So that is the, the challenge here is this pool is large. It has a large volume, but it only has small plumbing and it also only has 120 volts available for the pump. If it had 240 volts, there is additional, like for example, 3000 RPM, that's the maximum speed on this variable speed pump. If we had 240 volts, it would be more than 3000, it would be 3450. And the maximum speed that we'd be, we would be getting would be more than 71, could be 81, could be 91. So that is the setup, is we've got a big pool with small plumbing and the very minimal uh, power supply for the pump. So really it's kind of just a worst case scenario across the board here. What we want is 108,000 gallons of water per day. Here's the problem. At 71 gallons per minute, even if you didn't use variable speed, if you just ran the pump 24 hours a day at the maximum RPM that we can get out of this 120 volt power supply, 71 gallons per minute, that's still only, I think, 102,000 and change. It's still less than the goal, 24 hours a day, running at the highest possible speed. So that's important right there because we've identified a situation where a variable speed pump is not providing value here. The, truly the problem is the pool is not built correctly. 20 by 40 pool needs to have bigger plumbing. It needs to have a better power supply for the pump so that you can get more gallons per minute out of it. And that's, that's the truth. But let's go ahead and continue with this calculation. Great big pool. We know we're aiming for 108,000, but we know we're not going to get it. So let's just see what we can get. So we're going to do six hours at the highest possible speed, 12 hours at 2,500 RPM and six hours at 1,750 RPM. Here's the the volume that we have for each of those RPM settings and the wattage. So that's 71 gallons per minute at 3000 RPM, 1500 watts. Let's run through those numbers right now. We'll start here on the bottom because the pump's already at 1750. So we should see 40 gallons per minute and 356 watts. Just a shade over 40 gallons per minute. And right about 356 watts as expected. Let's go ahead and, get, go ahead and test 2500 RPM. Fifty-eight and a half gallons per minute. Nine hundred watts. And again, that's what we're expecting. Fifty-eight gallons per minute, nine hundred watts. And now let's go ahead and look at the maximum RPM on this hundred and twenty volt installation.
71 gallons per minute. Just about 1500 watts. And that's what we're expecting to see. That's right around 10, 10 and a half PSI. About nine inches of mercury vacuum on the section side. I think that puts this pool system somewhere around 35 feet of head resistance. So you could also look up on a pump curve and see a flow rate probably right around 71 gallons per minute for this one and a half horsepower super flow variable speed pump. So let's go ahead and crunch these numbers a little bit. Now that we know that these are real world figures that we're talking about. So that schedule that I provided here, as we already know, we can't achieve 108,000 per day with this system. It's not possible. So that system, that uh, program that I just laid out resulted in 81,720 gallons of water in total, well shy of the 108,000 goal, but this could be said that this is two turnovers, just a little over two turnovers in the pool. And so that's better than nothing you could say, but again, this pool is fundamentally not built properly. It does not have the correct equipment to be operating like this. So when it comes to the power consumption here, you can see that 1500 watts for six hours is 9,000 watts, 900 watts times 12 hours for 10, eight, and 356 watts for six hours. And the grand total is 21,936 watts or 21.94 kilowatts. Now, for most of my videos at this point, I would just say then, okay, take that number, 21.94, and times it by 13 cents. That's the national average per kilowatt hour. And if we did that in this video, like all the rest, we would have $2.85 per day in order to achieve just under 82,000 gallons of filtered water in this swimming pool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the variable rates because that's that might be interesting. This is a little bit more complex of a calculation, as you can see. Basically what we have to do is we have to account for each of those 21,936 watts in mid-peak, peak, or off-peak hours of operation because the cost of electricity is different under each of those situations. And so in calculating this out, what we did is we started with something like the highest cost, the 21.7 cents per kilowatt hour. Well, when you're paying the most for the power, you want to use the least amount of power. And so that's what we did here. And then for the remainder of the day, we applied the peak, or sorry, the mid peak and the peak values. When calculated out, you can see that $2.81 would be the actual cost based on a variable electrical cost, variable electrical rates, which is actually very similar to that multiplier that I say to normally use the 13 cents. The values for the, the rates were 15 cents per kilowatt hour, 21.7 cents per kilowatt hour, and 10 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. And I even fact factored in that Saturdays and Sundays are eat off peak for the in entirety of the day. So during the week, you were looking at 281 per day, Saturdays and Sundays, 230 per day. That's 1865 per week or 7460 per month. And again, that is that includes the variable rate calculations and the weekends being 
entirely off peak and it's very similar next time I'll probably just use the multiplier because it keeps the math a little bit simpler uh, for people to understand but if you found this information helpful please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my youtube channel and you can check out my website swimmingpoolsteve.com